The euro was about to close right here, super close to that level. No need to bother. A solid level popped up at the Canadian dollar, 136.190. There's a solid level up there at the high of this bar, 156.78. Keep an eye on it. All right, let's see what's cooking in the market today and uh, what goodies are up for grabs. Actually, I didn't throw out any recommendations on the Telegram channel yesterday. But before we jump into the nitty gritty, let me break down when I offer recommendations for a specific asset. This will give you some clarity and then we'll get down to the instruction. First off, the asset must have some rock solid levels. Secondly, it's great if the asset demonstrates some accumulation, or at the very least, it should have some energy for future moves. Now this energy comes from three places. Accumulation is the first source. The second source is counter trend energy. So if the asset has made a big move in one direction, that's our counter trend energy. Then there's the energy we can't control, the news. If there's some major upward or downward movement due to news, that asset is causing a stir. Now here's a crucial factor, closing near the level. In other words, the asset should close pretty close to the level. Why didn't I throw out any recommendations for the euro? Well, it closed way off from the level. You see, it hit the level dead on, traveled barely anything, some 20 points. In situations like this, you never take the profit. Low volatility is key here. Only then will I give out this recommendation. So, let's tackle this step by step. But don't forget this golden nugget. Practice stems from theory, not the other way around. So, once you grasp the theory behind what we're hunting for, you won't be asking, why no love for the New Zealand dollar? Take yesterday, for instance. The euro closed nearby, almost hitting the level. No dice there. You see, the asset made it to the level, and now it has stopped at the level. One thing to remember, I aim to hand out assets that have some room for movement left in them for you to enter. If volatility is through the roof, I'm steering clear of that asset. Otherwise, your trades will be closing with stop losses. So, it's crucial to spotlight assets or break down assets that set the stage for some game-changing scenarios and entry points. So, keep a keen eye on the euro. Today's closing is a big deal, mark my words. Well, the room for asset movement looks pretty solid, meaning grabbing that profit should be a walk in the park. Today's closing is key. If the euro closes here, snug as a bug near its level, on a low time frame, then I'm throwing the euro into a short trade. With the room for movement looking good and the channel fairly clear, the euro's got a real shot at heading south. Don't forget this crucial tidbit. It's super important to grasp that when you're picking an asset, you need to have that theoretical component in mind. What was the theory behind it? All right, on to the NZD. See, this is the classic scenario where an asset pops out of the blue. We're not entirely sure if there was some big news driving it. So if you look at it, right, there wasn't any solid reason behind it, just some news out of nowhere. So if NZD swings back here, that's an excellent short signal. It's what we call a trend reversal. But if there's no solid reasoning behind it, it's probably best to just shrug it off. JPY is throwing a new level into the mix. It's not backing down, aiming to travel higher. You see JPY, a new level. Hey, don't overlook one important thing. When an asset starts acting up like this, tanking hard against the dollar, you can bet your bottom dollar that currencies like the Japanese yen or the Turkish lira start creating candles like these. It's what we call intervention. Happens every time. Take a gander at the Turkish lira. It's been crawling up from the very bottom, hitting 161. I've pulled the plug on the Turkish lira because all you'll end up with there are stop losses and there is nothing you could do about it. Just like what happened with the Swiss franc, they'll just mess you up big time. So, keep a close eye on that rock solid level. The high of this bar sits at 156.78. If it breaks out, and mark my words it will, then the Japanese yen is going to take a nosedive, continuing its downward spiral against the good old greenback. Moving on to AUD. You see, there's been no such signal with AUD. Let me spell it out for you. Australian dollar is a short trade. I'll even toss it into my channel right now, but... Don't expect miracles here. You won't get much here. Let's take a look as we move on to a lower time frame. Even there, volatility is through the roof, so keep your peepers peeled for a drop in volatility. The price made a wild jump. 
When volatility is off the charts like this, it's not even worth considering such a recommendation. Let's talk Swiss franc. Check out that strong level. I'll be keeping an eye on it today for sure. I didn't throw it out there for one simple reason. The level was way too close. There is no point in giving a signal when it's practically breathing down our necks. The asset doesn't have much juice left to keep going. So I'll just wait and see how it plays out. Now, onto the British pound. Still playing the waiting game here. Uh, got my eye on this level. Haven't touched many lately. Uh, this level has probably been sitting here since December, like six months ago. Uh, let's see how things unfold. Just so you know, we had a long signal here earlier, but we're moving at a snail's pace now. Remember when the British pound made that insane 150 point move in a single day? Yeah, those were the days. Now it's like watching paint dry. Forex isn't exactly lighting up the charts right now. We're in need of some serious movement. All right, let's chat about the Canadian dollar. Had a level somewhere around here, maybe about a week ago or so. Time to readjust. This sweet limit level popped up. Let's check it out. 13690, 1.3690, 1.3690, down to the cent. A solid level just showed up at the Canadian dollar. 1.3690. Got to see how things unfold here. But mark my words, if that level gets broken out, the Canadian dollar is going to make some serious moves. All right, let's tackle oil. Oil's on the short side. Uh, but here's the kicker. I'll break it down for you. There's an accumulation zone in oil where finding a solid entry point would cause a bit of a headache. So we've got this level here sitting at a low of 81.56. If that level gets broken out and we're hanging out pretty close to it all the time, then it's game on. The level's crystal clear. If the 1.8156 level is broken out, then it's basically smooth sailing from there. Heading first here, and then here. See why I'm leaning towards shorting oil. Thing is, there's stuff brewing in Iran, Israel, and the whole Middle East, but oil ain't budging. Back in the day, some five, six years ago, if something went boom over there, oil prices would skyrocket in a heartbeat. But now, even with all the chaos in the Middle East, there's barely a ripple in the oil market. That's a pretty clear sign that oil's likely to take a dive, so... Keep a close eye on it. Shorting oil at 81.56 looks mighty fine, especially if volatility starts calming down on the short time frames. You see, with volatility kicking up a storm, it's crucial to keep a close eye on those bars near the level. Those bars beside the level are a stop loss. If you spot massive bars like these, ain't no stop order is going to hold. So make sure to be super cautious. Moving on to Ethereum and Bitcoin. Rollbacks are par for the course here. It's hard to say what's next. That's a very tough zone for both. Overall, it looks not too bad for now. All right, on to silver. I went short on silver at 31.58. Would I short silver again? You betcha. It took a sharp dive, and here's why. Given the conflict in the Middle East, it's a classic scenario for silver and gold. When tensions flare up or military action kicks off, silver and gold usually see a spike. Folks are starting to lean towards safer assets, and that means gold's back in the spotlight. And naturally, silver's tagging along for the ride. Take a good look. Silver's holding its own pretty well. No levels nearby yet, so we'll need to keep an eye on it come evening. I love keeping tabs on assets like this when the day winds down. Once the volatility settles, that's when I start paying close attention. First things first, I'll be watching how the asset closes. All right, on to gold. I've still got faith that gold is going to climb in the long haul. Yes, I tossed gold into the mix because I reckon it's got more room to grow. The metal has been undervalued, so I'm banking on gold's upward trajectory. Now, as for the S&P, it's definitely not in the mood to take a tumble. Will it keep climbing? Well, that's anyone's guess, but chances are looking pretty good. The S&P is holding steady for now, and those quarterly reports weren't too shabby either. So. I'll be keeping a close watch on how the S&P plays out. 